on the water has been brought to you by Here we have Angus Roberts, skipper of the Sea Road Mersey, 8,000 tonne trading ship. Angus, firstly, welcome to the show. Yeah, mate. Welcome, guys. Oh, look, it's sensational. Here we are up on the bridge of this magnificent vessel. Tell us a little bit, firstly, about the trading route. Sea Road Mersey and the Sea Road Tamer are Patrick ships. They run from Devonport to Melbourne through the week, and the Sea Road Mersey on Sundays comes to King Island, and that's where we are now. Great beef, great cheese. Absolutely. Great place. Without a doubt. How long's the vessel? This one was built, it was 90 metres long, and then they decided that we could increase the size of it, so we took it up to Singapore, cut it in half, and put another 30 metres in the middle of it. Right, I've noted, we've had a look at the uh, lifeboats on board. There's obviously a lot of safety equipment. Uh, tell us a bit about the lifeboats first up. We have 15 crew. The lifeboats are. Um, eight and a half metres, uh, sorry, about 30 feet long, 25, 30 feet long, seating for 17, so each boat can take the total crew. Uh, the one on the starboard side is a rescue boat because designated Bass Strait Trade, we were going to be the vessel that was called in first if there are any mishaps in Bass Strait. So the starboard boat is a little bit faster than the other one and we can retrieve it in heavier weather than the other lifeboat. Well, 15 crew, what are they doing? Every night we're at sea and every day we're in port. So they call us the Black Widows and the guys are working through the day lashing the cargo and unlashing cargo. And then in the evening, there's two people on the bridge at any one time, one keeping a lookout and one navigating the vessel, keeping it on track. There's some fairly sophisticated systems on board, as you'd expect. What, co you know, how long does it take to get a ticket to uh, be the skipper of one of these vessels? It's a fairly complicated system in my day. We did three years at sea, a year at college, so there's four. Another three years and then another year at college, so there's seven, eight. Another three years and another year at college, so it's about 12, 13 years before you get your master's certificate. And then you have to wait for someone to die to get the job. <laughs> Probably, well, you know, good for you, not so good for them. No, it's a good job. Uh, we are one of the last Australian fleet, or last vessels in the Australian fleet. The government has had their say with the Australian Merchant Navy, along with the companies. But we feel that we provide a good service for Bass Strait, and in particularly for King Island. Um, there's not too many times that we can't get in and out of the harbour. It's a good trade, it's a good, good company to work for. Atrocious weather going across Bass Strait, I'm sure. At times it can get pretty ordinary. Uh, my cabin is at the front of the vessel and sleeping with a porthole above me, with it sounds like if you have a fire hose going against your porthole all night with the water, solid water coming over the bow of the vessel. You um, pitch the vessel, the bed leaves you and then it comes up to meet you, leaves you, you get pole driven into the bulkhead in the front, up, up the bow. Oh that's got to be great. Everybody gets a little bit testy after a week of bad weather. Oh, but sure. luckily it doesn't happen that often. So. <laughs> now the catering officers down in the galley, it uh, looks almost like a five star restaurant down there mate. Actually when we get out, our main meal is in the evening because that's when the crew has finished their work. You usually have a roast dinner of some sort. Um, yes, the food can be quite good. Oh that's alright. Now what drives the boat? We've got two Wardsiller engines down there, they're about four and a half thousand horsepower each. Um, we have a small bow thruster at the front of the vessel for manoeuvrability. We have twin Becker rudders which means that they are built, constructed a little bit like an aeroplane wing. So they have a trim tab on the back. If the rudder is at 40 degrees, the trim tab will be at 80 degrees. Okay. Purely for manoeuvrability and for getting into tight spots like this place here. And it is fairly tight in here as we've seen. Can you run us through some of the control systems on board the Sea Road Mersey? Well, as I said before, the vessel has two Wartzler engines which drive two variable pitch, pitch propellers. So these are the throttles, it's just like a speedboat at home. Move it ahead, move it astern. For controlling the stern of the vessel, have a bow thruster for controlling the bow of the vessel. And you have pitch indicators here to see how much power you are generating 
on each end and then by standing on the side of the vessel or out, out on the starboard side as we are here you can keep the vessel flat when you're berthing because we have 8,000 tonnes displacement which is only a small ship actually 8,000 tonnes but if you hit something side on at 8,000 tonnes at one or two knots you're going to leave quite a hole or make a fair bit of damage. Indeed. So you can see it all from up here looking down. This is my berthing position. All these controls are duplicated on the other side of the vessel and also in the centre of the vessel. Um, when we're berthing, the chief officer would be in with the controls in there. If anything goes wrong here, I can say to my chief officer, take over in there, I want this or I want that. But on the whole, when we get close to the berth, I take control of the rudders and the engines and the bow thruster and berth the vessel. Uh, a little bit of practice involved in that, I reckon. They throw you in at the deep end, you understudy for a week and you feel confident and then the master, the captain that you're taking over from, says it's all yours. The first time can be quite nerve-wracking. <laughs> oh, indeed, I reckon you, it would. You learn through your mistakes, experience. <laughs> How many ports have you wrecked? I've only hit one wharf gently, dislodged old damage, I think the damage report said. But um, I took the advice of the previous master and assumed one thing was going to happen, and when it didn't happen, uh, the stern hit the wall fairly hard. Quite, an, quite embarrassing, really. Very embarrassing. Well, now that we've got it on camera, I'm sure that we'll diminish that embarrassment somewhat. I'm more embarrassed here than I was at the <laughs> <laughs> Angus, thanks very much for inviting us on board the Sea Road Mersey. One last question, can I have a go? Well, caveman, you can do anything on this boat. You put your mind to it, you can get there. Might be captain one day. Have a mop, swab the deck, that's it. On the Water has been brought to you by